Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you a very simple and easy technique for sculpting lips in Blender. So we're going to start with a UV sphere and I'm going to sculpt it. we get sort of this rough result here. Um, yeah, you could refine this a lot more, but this is just kind of like the general concept. Um, obviously, the, the, if anything in sculpting, the more um, you work on it, the more time you spend on it, the more details you add, the more realistic it's, realistic it's gonna be. Obviously, you'd have to up your um, resolution at a certain point if you want to add really fine details. But this is just a general um, basic idea. So if you're a beginner, you're really gonna like this tutorial. Um, so let's jump in and sculpt some lips in Blender. So when you scene open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and press delete. We're then gonna go Shift A and we're gonna to go to our mesh options. We're gonna add in a UV sphere. And let's go over to our modifiers and add modifier. And let's type in here sub, get a subdivision surface. Let's bump it up to two in the viewport and come to the drop down and apply that. So now we have a higher resolution. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go shade smooth. We're also gonna go over here to our viewport shading. And this is optional, but I prefer to come here and click on matte cap and then click on this option here and change it to this clay studio one here, which looks really nice when we're sculpting. But once again, that is completely optional. From here, what we're gonna do with our sphere selected, we're gonna go over into our sculpting workspace. And um, I guess because we changed workspaces, I didn't think this would happen, but I'd have to come up here again and just change it back. But anyway, not a big issue. We're gonna come over here to our active tools panel. We're gonna come down and enable dynamic topology and click OK. If you're new to sculpting, that essentially just allows us to dynamically re-topologize as we're sculpting. So if you add and take more topology, so it happens automatically. Um, if you didn't have that enabled, you'd only be moving pre-existing topology. We're also gonna come here to the detail size and change it to five, and we'll leave it as relative detail. That just means it's based on our distance to the object we're sculpting. So if we're in really close, it's gonna give us more, if we're on really Far away, it's gonna be bigger triangles. So um, anyway, so let's start by going to our front orthographic view. And I prefer to work with symmetry. At this time right now, by default, if I sculpt on one side, it's only on one side. So if I go here to the symmetry, I can come here and enable the mirror. If you wanted to make an unsymmetrical mouth, you can always start by sculpting in symmetry and then just adjust it later when you turn symmetry off. But the tool we're gonna to grab here is the crease brush. And we're gonna come here to the strength and make it 0.5. And we're gonna come in here and roughly in the middle, and we're gonna click and just drag like so. And I might come in a little bit closer, so just click and drag and go off to the side like that. And just make a groove. And once again, I'm gonna come in closer and just make another one following on top of there like that. Okay, just a simple groove, very easy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to our clay strips brush. And I'm just gonna come here and press F to grow the brush. And I'm just gonna come and sculpt, maybe a little bit smaller, just sculpt like this. And then come in a little bit closer and just make another little bit coming down like this. And then here at the bottom, I'm just gonna make two little patches like this. That's all for now. And then holding in the shift key, I'm just gonna click on here lightly a few times, just to smooth it out. The same over here and the same at the bottom and just slightly here at the top with the smooth tool, like that. And then from here, we're gonna go over to our grab brush. And once again, you can press F to grow or shrink the brush. And I'm gonna grow it a little bit smaller or shrink it like so. And then I'm gonna come here and just drag this apart over here and maybe out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna just kind of pull the lip up here to shape it. And I'm gonna do the same over here. I'm just gonna kind of pull it just to give it a little bit more volume like this. And then I'm gonna come here to my clay strips brush again, and I'm gonna just shrink it a little bit. And then if you hold in control, you can kind of do the inverse of the clay strips. I'm holding in control and just making a little groove here like that. And once again, I'll get the grab brush here and I'll just kind of move it in just to shape it, make it look a little bit more natural. Holding in shift, I'll just kind of blend it together at the top. And then from here at the front, we can hold in shift and just smooth it out, maybe around the edges here a little bit, and just here where it's a little bit too sharp. But it might be looking okay from the front so far. But if we want to go into the right orthographic view, it's way too flat. So what we can do, 
Um, I might just come at it kind of not fully in the side, but a little bit halfway between the front and the side. And with the grab brush, you can always just come here and just pull it out a little bit like so. And the same over here, just giving it a little bit more volume. And then at the front, I'm going to do the same. And once again, you don't want to go too crazy with this. Um, obviously, it depends on the character that you're making. If you're trying to do a caricature, you might um, exaggerate some of these features a little bit. But just a slight little bit of volume like that helps a lot. And then we're going to go over here to our crease brush. We're going to go and shrink it by pressing F. You want to come here and just make a crease running underneath the lip and then kind of off to the side and down like so. And then I'm going to go in closer and just kind of refine that shape a little bit. Then I'm going to grab the clay strips brush. I want to grow it and then just come in here in the bottom and just add a few strips like so just to add a bit more volume and then holding in shift. I'm just going to come here and I'm just going to smooth it out. So I'm holding in shift to get the smooth brush like so. And now we have a little bit of a chin. Once again, I'm going to get the grab brush and I'm just going to get it and just pull this out a little bit more and maybe just lift it up a little bit. Um, but the main focus here is the mouth. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to shrink my grab brush and I'm just going to pull down this topology here like so just slightly as I come closer here just to define the bottom of the lip here just a little bit more like that. There we go. And then here in the front, I'm going to come and just get the grab brush and just kind of and just kind of drag it all up like so just to define it a little bit more along the edges. Then let's get our crease brush. And with that, we can just come over here and just define the inside of the lips a little bit more like so. And I'm going to come here in the corner and give it a slight crease. And then I'm going to get my clay strips brush and I'm just going to round it out just a little bit here just to add a little bit more volume. And then holding a shift, I'm just going to smooth around there like that just to add a little bit of a wrinkle. And there we have a basic simple mouth. Now, the more you spend time on this, the better you can get it to look. My favorite tool is just usually the grab brush for making those sort of final volume adjustments to kind of get it all to look exactly how you want. Obviously, looking at reference images is going to help you a lot when you're doing this, just to kind of see what the human mouth looks like. And just pay attention to the little anatomical details. Like here at the top, we have this sort of end shape. We want to make sure it blends in nicely and smoothly to this little bit up here. And just another thing, if you get your grab brush, you can also adjust the corners of the mouth to make it look a little bit more expressed. So if you want to make it a little bit more sad, a little bit more happy, and um, you can always do that. So that is the basic idea of how to make some simple lips in Blender using these techniques. Um, I really hope you have enjoyed the tutorial and I guess I'll see you guys next time for another one. Thank you for watching.